Hey friends, today's video is about how to love your enemies while also protecting your mental and emotional health. Boundaries are important. Boundaries, I would say, are vital in cultivating a healthy life, but boundaries are really hard to set. In fact, boundaries are often hardest to set with the people that need them the most. Before we get into setting the boundaries, Let's dive into what Jesus actually says from the Gospel of Luke chapter 6. Now, there's going to be more about boundaries on this week's YouTube channel and on the Slated for Grace website. So I encourage you to subscribe to both of those and check them out as well. So in Luke 6, 27, Jesus says, love your enemies. Now, the Greek word here for enemies is quite a spectrum. Okay, um, enemy can mean a person who is passively against you. Maybe they have feelings of hatred towards you, some not good feelings. Maybe they show it, maybe they don't. I'm sure it comes out somehow. Okay, so you have that kind of enemy. And then you have all the way to a person who is openly hostile and is seeking your complete demise. Okay, big spectrum here big spectrum. But let's get personal. When you think about your own life and you hear the word enemy, who comes to your mind? Now, it may be a very difficult person for you. It may be a relative, a family member that you have a lot of history with. It may be a person that you considered a friend for a time and something happened um, that harmed you. It may be a person who has done something to you or done something to someone that you love in some way, whether they know it or not, okay? Um, only you know who comes to mind when you hear the word enemy. Uh, that can be completely between you and God. But regardless of who it is and where on the spectrum of harm they fall, Jesus commands his disciples to love those people which leads us into boundaries. How do we do this? Well, first we have to look at what Jesus' word love actually means here. So in the Greek language, there were four words for love. There is eros, which is romantic love. That is not the word that Jesus uses here, okay? Then there is philio, which is like the love that you have for your best friend. It's like brotherly love, sisterly love, okay? Again, not the word that Jesus uses here. Then you have the third word for love, which is storge. And that is a very natural love. Think about between a parent and a child. This is also the love that you would use if you're talking about family members, friends, co-workers, people that, you know, you you have some kind of bond with, okay? This is even the love that you would have for your pet, okay? You have a you have a bond, you have a connection with them in some way. Again, not the word that Jesus uses here. But then you have the fourth word for love, and it is the word agape. Agape is the highest form of love. And this is the word that Jesus uses here. It's also the word used to describe the kind of love that the Lord God has for all of humanity. If you know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you translated that, it would say, for God so agape the world. So agape is the kind of love that says, I want only goodness for you. I want blessings for you, okay? I want the best life for you. It is a love that is devoid of bitterness. It is devoid of grudges or hatred, obviously, towards that other person. It is a love that wants the best life that God has for them. Now, you may be thinking, that's the hardest one. Like, that's the hardest one. Seriously, I have to have that highest form of love for my enemies? Yes, that is the calling. But I want us to unpack a little bit of what that means and what that doesn't mean, okay? Loving our enemies means that you do want the best life for them. That you want, you want God's 
blessings, God's restoration, God's healing for them. You don't want them to keep doing what they are doing because you want them to have a good life. The good life that, that the Lord God has created for them. However, this kind of love does not mean uh, that you are to be romantically involved with them, like Eros, obviously. Um, it also means you don't need to be besties with them. You don't need to be close friends in any way with them. Uh, Jesus is not commanding them even to have a, a kind of bonding relationship in any way with our enemy. Uh, even the bond that you might have with just an acquaintance, you know. Uh, truth be told, you may never see your enemy again. And that might be a great thing for you. That might be the healthiest thing. And yet, you can still have agape love for them from afar. This is the boundary. The boundary is seek your enemy's good while also building a fence post. Okay? You can agape love someone without them in your life. You can. You can do that. If that's the boundary that you need to set, now they may hate that. They may knock down your fence and knock on your door constantly and you're putting your fence back up and going, nope, remember, we're not doing this. And you know what? They're allowed to feel that way. You let them feel how they feel. That is okay. You can still love them in a way that says, I don't want to hold a grudge here. I don't want there to be bitterness. I truly want the highest good for you. Okay, but also, it's not good for us to do this. Like, we don't need to be friends. We don't need to be acquaintances, even. I think, as Christians, we are not great at boundaries because we have confused Jesus' words, and we feel like Jesus wants us to, to submit to everyone and be friends with all people because that's how we love people. We have to be nice, and we have to be accommodating no, that may not be good for you in any way. In fact, having any kind of relationship uh, or bond or connection with that enemy may actually be keeping you from getting to a place where you can want the highest good for them. Because you keep putting yourself in situations where they can hurt you over and over. So putting a fence between you and that other person or um, a long-handled spoon maybe, maybe not even a fence, just a long-handled spoon or perhaps you build a concrete barrier, okay? Whatever is needed is not unloving when you are at the same time actively pursuing, wanting, praying for that person to have the greatest good in their life, okay? When you are actively pursuing forgiveness in your heart towards them, when you are actively trying to release bitterness and anger that you have towards them, that is the loving thing. Now, you may not be there yet, but you can get there, okay? You can seek the power of forgiveness and you can live at peace with that person in the world. That person may just not be in your world, okay? Because you have distanced yourself from them in a healthy way. You know, there is actually a section in the book of Acts, two sections actually, Acts 13 and Acts 15, where we see some enemy feelings between the apostles, okay? So you have John Mark, you have Barnabas, and you have Paul. And they are traveling together. And you see in Acts 13, 13, we see John Mark leave them. And he goes back to Jerusalem. Now, we don't have details. What we do know is, whatever the situation, this caused some hurt. It caused some anger. So you fast forward to Acts 15, 
And the Apostle Paul says to Barnabas, he says, hey, uh, let's return to those towns that we visited a while back and let's see how they're doing. Well, Barnabas is like, great, let's bring John Mark. And Paul does not like it. Paul does not like that. And in fact, scripture says they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and they sailed to Cyprus and Paul takes Silas and they go somewhere else. Okay. Was that wrong to do? No, it seems like that's what was needed. They needed some space. They needed to part ways. Reconciliation could not happen at that moment. It was not going to work. This is what we can gather, though, from that time apart, was that the Apostle Paul, in those years that followed, the Apostle Paul worked through his stuff, whatever it was. And John Mark, it seems, worked through his stuff. And thankfully, we have this letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. It's 2 Timothy. Okay, it's one of the last pieces of writing from Paul that we have. And at the end of that letter, Paul says... Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Well, for them, it seems there was eventually reconciliation. There was restoration, not immediately, eventually. Now, that might be the case for you. That might not be the case for you. That might not be what is best. That, that takes two people, right? That takes two people agape loving each other, which not, might not be your situation. Reconciliation between you and your enemy may never happen. The sight of heaven, okay? That is okay. Because as Paul writes, he wrote it to the Romans in chapter 12. This is what he says. He says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everyone. As far as it depends on you, live at peace. You can live at peace while still having an enemy. Because as far as it is depending on you, even from afar, you are seeking God's goodness for that other person. Boundaries are so important. People don't like them, and that's okay. People don't like Brussels sprouts. They're still good for you, okay? Whether you like them or not, it's just the truth. I love them. Uh, there's a great book about boundaries. It's by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. I put it in the description, okay? It's called Boundaries. They also have like boundaries for marriage, boundaries for kids, but Boundaries is a phenomenal book and it's in the comments. Um, I encourage you, please subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell for notifications so you'll know when new videos are posted. Subscribe to Slated for Grace. You'll get a seven-day devotional for free. Um, again, thanks for being here. Have a great day.